Hello and welcome to this community meetup, our very last live meeting for 2020. Yes? So this is for the wonderful teachers from the Active English community. We deserve this, don't we? So for those of you who don't know me, my name is Lilian Montalvão and I am a qualified and experienced educator who has been working with young learners for over 15 years now. I hold a master's degree in education and I'm also a certified positive discipline educator. I'm currently a primary teacher here in Brazil, in Belo Horizonte, where I'm based. I'm an ELT consultant, a teacher educator and a materials writer. So this year has been the biggest for my professional growth because of all of the challenges and all of the new things that I had to learn. Can you relate? Can anyone relate? <laughs> Yeah, right? So, uh, by now, I've had the chance to work with flipped learning, blended learning, content creating, and in the last few months, I've been learning about and producing materials for hybrid learning and the physically distanced classroom. So, that is basically why I was invited to host this wonderful meetup tonight. So, when the community expressed concern about what was coming in 2021, I knew that I wanted to help because as a teacher, I share all of those concerns too. I feel you. I really do. And it is such a pleasure to be part of this community. And I'm honored that many of you have shown up to hear what I have to say about something that I think is so important right now. So preparing your game plan for 2021. I want us all to be able to step into our summer break with peace of mind, knowing that we are prepared for the challenges of next year. So uh, we started talking about this over on the Active English Instagram account a little while ago and listening to what the community's concerns are. And then uh, in tonight's meeting, I'd like to address these concerns that you have been sharing and I'll do that by sharing with you five things that I'll be doing before the year is out okay so let's get down to it so here's the plan for tonight so these are the topics we'll be covering, okay? So, five topics. The first one is preparing for possibilities, remote, hybrid, blended learning, the physically distanced classroom. Wow, there are so many, right? But we can start preparing for them. Don't worry, we'll be fine. Number two, topic number two tonight, setting priorities for our first few lessons. So if you've been following us on Instagram and, and the Inner Circle Facebook uh, group, you will know what we mean when we say hashtag Maslow before we bloom, right? So topic number three tonight, building a partnership with families. Topic number four, getting ready to adapt your teaching. And finally, topic number five, organizing your professional development plan for 2021. So I hope you have a pen and paper with you to take notes because I believe uh, we'll be sharing some interesting content with you tonight. And in this session, you will be participating actively as well. So if you haven't already, Introduce yourself in the comments. Tell me where you're based, what age group you teach, and what format you will be teaching in 2020. Hybrid, the physically distanced classroom, remote teaching, don't know yet. So introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about what you think is going to happen to you, to your classroom in 2021. Okay, so I'm going to take a look at the comments right now. I can see lots of interaction going on here in the chat box. Wow, that's amazing. I'm so happy to see so many dedicated teachers here. So hello, hello, hello. I wish I could say everyone's 
names. I can see some familiar faces here. Oh, thank you so much. So let's see where you're based. Ah, uh, lovely, lovely, lovely. Okay, I dare say this is the most committed community of of teachers I know of. <laughs> Okay, uh, Gislaine is saying that uh, she works with very young learners. Natalia is based in uh, Brasilia. Tytech will teach private classes. All right, all right. Okay, let's see if I can catch up with you. Okay, Mirelle from Americana, São Paulo. <laughs> she teaches age 3 to 100. Wow, Mirelle. Congratulations. Uh, and she thinks... They will be totally presential in 2021. All right. Passo Fundo, Rio Grande do Sul. Wow. So many comments. Okay. Louise, kindergarten, junior school, high school. Wow. Louise from Rio de Janeiro. Dani Maker, based in São Paulo. More people from Passo Fundo. Uh, Lucy. <laughs> Lucy, thank, thank you so much for being here, Guarulhos. Wow, this is amazing. Yeah, I'm like so honored, so honored. Thank you so much. All right, so I'd also like to tell you that in a few days, you will be getting an email with resources and additional information that we put together as a follow-up to this meetup. So keep an eye on your inbox, okay? All right, so let's get down to it. Tip number one, preparing for possibilities. Remote, hybrid, blended, physically distanced classroom, all of them. So, of course, it would be almost obvious to say that the first step is to prepare for the delivery mode that you will be teaching with next year. But the truth is, today is December the 14th, and many of us still don't know which delivery mode we'll be using. Isn't that true? And that can be really scary, okay? But we're here for you. So let's take a deep breath. <laughs> and in case you don't know your delivery mode yet, remember to have a flexible mindset and start learning more about the different possibilities. So this is something we can do right now. We don't know exactly what is going to happen, maybe, but we know the possibilities right now. When schools closed down overnight back in March because of the pandemic, we were caught completely off guard, right? But now we know what our possibilities are so we can plan for them. So there is like an advantage here, if you allow me to call it an advantage. And also, no matter how uncertain this whole situation is, uh, by now, your school should have a couple of plans ready for next year, okay? So here is a checklist to help you prepare for these different possibilities. So have you got pen and paper? So here we go. First of all, talk to your school and put a little pressure on them to give you some answers if they haven't yet. Because as I said, they should have a couple of plans right now. Um, also, try to learn about your possible delivery modes. So, uh, what we've been seeing uh, is basically a list of four delivery modes, okay? So, remote teaching, which I think all of us have been doing, so all the lessons happen online. They can be 100% synchronous or live, 100% asynchronous, meaning pre-recorded videos or self-access materials or a combination of both. In my case, for example, it's a combination of both and we're still doing it. The second possibility is hybrid teaching. So be aware that there are different formats of hybrid teaching, but what has been adopted by most schools is the following. Lessons take place in the classroom with some students attending in person, so usually a reduced number of students for obvious reasons, while other students participate online at the same time. So these two things happen simultaneously, okay? Then when we talk about blended learning, we are referring to this format. Some lessons take place in the classroom, and other lessons happen online, but not simultaneously. 
okay? So this is, the, is basically the difference between hybrid and blended. And the fourth possibility, the physically distanced classroom. So in this case, all of the lessons happen in the physical classroom, again, with a reduced number of students because of social distancing and following all of the local health and safety protocols, okay? So have you been doing any of those? Uh, so if you could just share what you're currently doing, let's see, I, I, I'm kind of curious to know how many of you are already doing hybrid or the physically distanced classroom. So feel free to share uh, your current context in the comments, okay, in the chat box. Let's see what we've got. Here, yes, yeah, see, Larissa doesn't know which format she will be teaching. Okay, so let's see. Yeah, there's also blended learning. With It's like too many names sometimes, and then the, uh, the, the names can be kind of scary if we don't know what they mean, right? We start hearing all of these names and... We go like, oh my goodness, I can't take any of this anymore, right? So let's see. Uh, teacher Zhu, oh, we've got lots of answers here. So Taitek is teaching hybrid. Is our daughter remote and physically distanced classroom? Louise, just like me, just online or remote. Teacher Zhu Cordeiro, hybrid. Okay. Uh, Kathy from It's Playtime. Okay, remote teaching, one group doing remote teaching, the others are coming to school, remote and the physically distanced classroom, Rem okay, see, Lies doesn't know which format she will be teaching, just online, yeah, yeah, the secret garden, yeah, Lucy, tough for the little ones, totally, totally agree with that, okay, okay, Gabi has been hired, congratulations, and she thinks it'll probably be hybrid. Yeah, it seems like hybrid is the latest trend, right? But we have to be flexible. Okay, so let's then focus on hybrid and the physically distanced classroom now. So how can we prepare for hybrid? So here's another checklist to help you out. So first of all, find out what format of hybrid you will be using because there are some variations. The second uh, tip, read the official health and safety guidelines. Sometimes we take these for granted and they can be extremely helpful, okay? Especially when we don't, we don't get lots of uh, information from the school, okay? Then find out about your school's protocols because each school will have its own uh, protocols because these will also vary, right? It depends on the size of the building, the number of students, the number of classrooms. So find out about your school's own protocols. The next tip, follow accounts of teachers who are already working with this mode of delivery and then save ideas for your classroom next year. And here I'm sharing two accounts that I've been following. I'm sure there are others. So the first one is called uh, A Primary Kind of Life. And the second one, Life with Mrs. Wesick. So uh, if you're interested, take a look at their Instagram profiles because uh, it's been helpful to me, okay? And then find out what equipment you will have and do a trial run next year before classes begin. Uh, it is important to, to have in mind that everything that we're saying tonight uh, is not to overwhelm you and make you more worried. It's actually the opposite, okay? It's because when we don't have, let's say, any control of what's going to happen, that can get us really, really anxious, isn't it? So what we're trying to do here is introduce you to some kind of path so you, so we, because I'm in the same position as you, can have a certain degree of control, okay? Even if we don't have as much control as we used to, okay? So then that's what we are saying now about the equipment. Find out uh, with what kind of equipment you will have and try to do a trial run, but next year, not now, before classes begin. And then uh, 
uh, Claire and I, we have been working on this for a while. And what we suggest as a minimum would be a laptop, a projector, a digital copy of your course book. All of them have it now. Fast and stable internet connection, of course. A microphone to protect your voice. Extremely important because we'll be wearing masks. Some of us will be wearing masks and the face shield. Uh, we can't get too close to the children, right? A mobile phone or a, ta a tablet so that you can move around if necessary. And then you will still be seen by the students who are at home because this is hybrid, still hybrid. Bluetooth earphones for the same reason. So you can move around if necessary and still be able to hear what the kids who are online uh, are saying or doing. Okay. And you will get all of these checklists, okay, in that email that uh, we mentioned. So don't worry. And then I have a question for you. I'm going to invite you to participate again. Are you currently following any accounts of teachers who are doing hybrid teaching and, and sharing a little bit of what they're doing? If so, could you please share those accounts in the chat box? Because then more people can uh, get to know these wonderful teachers. Maybe that wonderful teacher is you. Maybe you're doing that already. You're sharing your experiences, your challenges. Why not? Right? It's part of the process. And maybe we can start following you and getting wonderful ideas from you. So let's take a look at what we've got here. So anyone with accounts to suggest? Let's see. Okay, Gislaine, Gislaine says, I know, I don't know if Gislaine is talking about accounts. So Neto, if that's you, can you share your account, your social media uh, profile so we can start following you? <laughs> and I can tell you, I, I did this in the beginning of remote teaching because probably just like you, I was too desperate to figure out how to do remote teaching with seven groups of second graders <laughs> from a regular school. So I started, that was one of the first things that I did. I started following uh, other teachers in the same situation. And then what I did was uh, I started following teachers from the United States, Canada, Australia, who are ahead of us in the pandemic timeline. Let's, let's put it this way. And then most of what I was facing back in March, in the beginning of April, they had already been uh, trying to tackle. So it was extremely, extremely helpful to get ideas from their accounts. Okay, ah, so let's see. We've got some accounts here. Let me see if I can. I'm going to try to post them here. Oh, wonderful. So we've got Julio here. Let's share your account. I am, let's see. Okay, I am Julio Araújo. So this is Neto, Julio. Okay, so guys, take notes of these accounts. This is gold. Ah, Tayane Ferreto. So I, I'm going to switch now. Tayane.ferreto. Thank you, Tayane. Yeah, Neto is just saying that this is his Instagram profile, okay? Um, then... Okay, Natalia said she's following Casa Thomas Jefferson biling Bilingue for Schools. Great. Yeah, they have wonderful, wonderful ideas and uh, contents there always. Okay, thank you, Natalia. Yeah, 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 you can only post videos of your private classes. Yes, I get it. Okay, let's see what else. Uh, okay, Tayane Ferreto, there, Casa Thomas Jefferson. Uh-huh. Let's see, let's see. Okay. All right. If you remember any others, just drop them in the chat box, okay? That's going to be absolutely amazing. Okay. So, now, let's take a look at what we can do to prepare for the physically distanced classroom. So, 
First of all, same as hybrid, read about the official health and safety guidelines. Okay, extremely important. Also because these will vary from one city to another. Okay, from one state to another, from one city to another. Then find out about your school's protocols. Find out about your physical space, especially the arrangement of furniture. Your school should know that by now. Okay, how many desks and chairs uh, are we going to have? How are the kids going to be sitting? Is there going to be a sitting uh, plan? How is that going to work? Okay, uh, are they going to be sitting in rows? Try to find out about that too, because all of these things are going to impact our lesson planning, isn't it? Again, follow accounts of teachers who are already working with this mode of delivery and save ideas for your classroom next year. So here I have, again, um, the, 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 the other one that I suggested earlier, a primary kind of life is great for that too, although it's, it's hybrid. Then there is this American teacher, uh, Halpy One. Uh, he's a, a kindergarten male teacher and he's amazing. Lose parts of kinder and hello fifth, okay? So do you have any suggestions of accounts for the community to follow? I mean, accounts of teachers sharing about the physically distanced classroom. Uh, I like to see especially um, uh, photos of the physical space because then I can see like how they are arranging the furniture, what kind of uh, protocols they're following, how far apart the desks actually are. Okay, so if you have those, drop them in the chat box. And then moving on. One sec, please. Okay. Now, tip number two, let's move on to tip number two, which is setting priorities for the first few lessons. Hashtag Maslow before we bloom. But how can Maslow's hierarchy of needs help us in 2021? Well, actually, Maslow's theory can help us at any time, but now more than ever. So maybe you are familiar with this pyramid. We have shared a few things about that as well. So basically, uh, Maslow's hierarchy of needs is a theory of motivation that states that uh, five categories of human needs dictate an individual's behavior. So and then those needs are physiological needs that we can see at the basis of the pyramids, then safety needs, love and belonging needs, STEAM needs, and finally, self-actualization needs. So we need to start from the basis of the pyramid so we can move all the way up to self-actualization, all right? So that's why the priority in the first few weeks back at school should be meeting students' basic needs for safety and belonging before focusing on their academic development. Actually. This is for any time, but now, during these challenging times, essential, absolutely essential. So, and then, how do we do that? What can we do to help children, let's say, move up the pyramid, uh, towards the top of the pyramid? So, we can... First of all, create a welcoming environment. So these are these should be our priorities for the first few lessons, okay? Create a, a welcoming environment. And then a few ideas uh, to inspire you. You can create a wall display with photos that you can ask families to send in of the children, their families, their pets, or anything else that may be special or important to them. Because remember, they won't be allowed uh, to uh, take personal objects like toys and stuff like that to school because of the virus. But then having some familiar things around them can really help them feel welcome, especially the very little ones, because remember they have spent, many of them, the ones who haven't uh, been back to school yet, they have been away from the school building for many, many months. So it will be natural uh, for them to have some kind of adaptation struggle, maybe, 
okay? Uh, separation and anxiety, things like that. Another idea on the same topic, make sure that you are there to greet learners every day. Remember, we'll be wearing masks, so we really need to practice smiling uh, with our eyes, okay? And making them feel comfortable and welcome with our voice, the way we speak to them, all right? Uh, learn their names. Also, uh, this is all about the welcoming environment, okay? Learn their names and use them as soon as you can. I know this is going to be harder because they'll be wearing masks, right? But we can do it. Then another uh, tip, use strategies to build rapport and to help learners build, pos build positive relationships with their peers as well. They will need help with that, right? especially the ones who have spent like 10 months away from school. So what can we do to uh, build, help them build rapport, to build rapport with them and help them build these positive relationships? We can play games to help them learn each other's names from day one. We can provide group challenges so that they can experience the feeling of working together and succeeding as a team. Uh, something that I like to do with my primary learners is like playing quick games in which it, it's like the whole class against the teacher because they then they really get this feeling of working together and beating the teacher, you know. Um, another tip in this topic, make learners feel safe and cared for. Remember, safety in the pyramid. So, what can we do to make learners feel safe and uh, cared for? First of all, let's talk explicitly about the measures that are being taken to keep everyone safe. We can't take for granted that they will understand that just by being back in the school building and seeing people wearing masks. Okay, so let's talk about it. Let's not underestimate uh, their capacity to understand these things. Something else that we can do is to transmit our confidence in the safety protocols that we are all following and this is uh, true for the learners we should do that for the learners and for the families okay so families will also feel uh, okay with their kids being back to the school building another idea here is to show interest in how they are feeling and in their lives outside the school so we can ask questions about that and try to Take a few notes so we can follow up with that, actually. Um, another way of uh, building positive, um, sorry, not building positive, another way of setting priorities is to develop ways of encouraging learners so that they will feel a sense of belonging and significance. This is so, so important, especially with young learners. And then how can we do that? So we can create a system to encourage equal participation from all students, for example, because we know there we always have those students who always want to participate and the ones who never want to participate. So what you can do, for example, is write their names on popsicle sticks. And then every time you need to elicit uh, an answer from an individual student, you take a stick from one cup. And then by doing that, you can ensure that you are encouraging everyone to participate okay even the ones who don't really like taking risks another uh, tip here is look to positive discipline for lots of practical ways you can build a sense of belonging and significance in your classroom this is something that is going to transform your learning environment we've been um, talking about positive discipline also on the active english instagram account and the inner circle and Trust me on this. This can really transform our environments. So if you would like to add something to this list or share your own, own plans for setting priorities for the first few lessons, please share them with the community in the chat box. Let's take a look at some ideas here. I can see lots of interaction going on. I wish I could just read all of this. So let's see. So do you have extra ideas on the priorities for our first, very first lessons. Oh, let's see. Oh, there's an, an interesting idea here. Something that 
let's see if you can all read this. So this is Kathy from It's Playtime. She said that she recorded a video showing them what would be different at school in their classroom, showing them that the toys wouldn't be available in the same way. Let's go. There is part two here. And also showing them that I would look different because I would be wearing a face shield. Wow, that's amazing, Kathy. Thanks for sharing that. Absolutely, absolutely relevant. So let's see. Okay, all right. Great. So let's just hide this. Okay, and let's keep on going. All right, I think we're good to move on, right? To tip number three. So tip number three is building a partnership with families. Wow, this has completely changed things for me this year. Really. <laughs> I wish I could tell you all about this, but maybe next time. So we have all known that the engagement of families and caregivers is directly linked to student achievement isn't it? And uh, with schools reopening in 2021, many of them, like mine, for example, for the first time in 10 months, building a strong partnership with parents and caregivers will be more important than ever. And then to avoid mismatched expectations and disappointment, we should prioritize relationships with the family. So now I'll be sharing some tips on how to do that. Note that some of these should be done by the school, but if you realize the school is not actually working on that, you can go and suggest that they do it, okay? So here we go with another checklist. So you can send something home to families to end the year on a positive note, maybe a quick video message. That's what I'm gonna do, for example, I'm gonna record a thank you message and share it, with, send it to the families. Uh, at the beginning of the year, or if it's possible at the end of the year, share health and safety procedures with families. So this will lower their anxiety. Get to know your students, parents, or caregivers as soon as the year begins. Find out relevant information about your student's home context. So we don't know exactly what has happened in their homes, in their families. Maybe they have lost a loved one. Maybe one of the parents lost their job. So this is really important. Of course, usually we will count on coordinators for that, but have this in mind. Be the voice of reason and reassurance. Remember when we talked about transmitting confidence in the procedures and the protocols uh, with the kids, the same thing with the families. They will probably be anxious about taking the kids back to school with everything that is going on. So. We have to be this voice of reason and reassurance. Choose an appropriate channel of communication and make sure everyone knows how to use it. One channel, because the more channels, the harder this gets, okay? And communication is gold as well. And don't wait for families to reach out to you. So if you notice there is something different, something strange about a kid, talk to the family about it or talk to coordination about it, okay? So to prevent the problems and maybe offer your help and your support, your empathy before things actually uh, get messy. And send parents regular messages about how the school plans to respond to, to the changing situation because we know we will have to be flexible on this, right? Schools may close again, we don't know. We're still in the pandemic, unfortunately. And I know many of us struggled with um, these relationships during remote teaching because we started having more frequent contact with the families, isn't it? So does anyone here have any other ideas on how to build strong partnerships with the families? Would you like to share anything? So the chat box is all yours. Let's take a look at this now. Um, Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Claire is asking you if you were allowed to communicate with families. Yeah, I know. Um, depending on your context, you're not allowed. And it's such a pity, such a pity. This makes a whole of a difference. 
I must confess, I used to be a little concerned about these relationships. Um, I don't know, maybe because I was afraid that if I got too close to them, um, they would start demanding too much from me. But the the but 2020 came to completely change my thoughts on that. Uh, wonderful, wonderful things have happened in my remote classes because the families and I got closer. Not all of them, obviously, but many of them. The Nubia communicates, can communicate with families. Yeah, Fernanda said, I don't think the parents could feel more confident and comfortable than talking to the teachers. Yeah, it's the person who's there with the kid, right? Every day. Okay. Ah, the secret garden. Oh, this is nice. Let's let's share this. So Lucy said that when she can, she sends photos and reassuring messages um, as much for positive things as when problems arise. Wonderful. Because we tend to communicate only when bad things happen, right? And yeah. Okay. I really wish I could read everything that you're saying because it, it's just like amazing what's going on here. I hope I can read all of this after the meetup. So now let's move on to tip number four, getting ready to adapt your teaching. Lillian, again. <sighs> yes, so we were all forced to learn how to adapt materials and teaching strategies for remote teaching, isn't it? Now, when we think about um, the physical classroom or hybrid teaching, other adaptations will be necessary so that we can follow the health and safety protocols correctly. So don't wait until day one, lesson one, to open your teacher's book and find yourself having to improvise adaptations like, oh my goodness, the book is asking uh, me to pair students up and they can't be in pairs. So, okay, let's see what we can do right now. So, I think you're gonna like this. I have come up with a list of materials and activity types that are often part of young learner lessons and that you may need to adapt next year. So this is gonna give you uh, some kind of, I think a better idea of what to look for in your lesson plans, in your teacher's uh, books when you start planning your lessons. So you won't have, what, I, what I'm going to share now is going to save you a lot of time. You won't have to be going like, oh my goodness, should I adapt this? Mm, what about this? Mm, I think I should adapt this. And just like looking for the very little things that you will need to adapt. So um, here we go. You should be mindful that these things will need will possibly need adaptation. Let's just move to the next slide. Okay, so activities that may require adaptation. Asking students to sit in a circle, asking students to run and touch flashcards, pictures, objects. How many of you usually do that? Placing flashcards, pictures, and objects on the floor. Asking students to touch the flashcards, pictures, or objects in other ways, such as passing them around, sorting them out, uh, drawing flashcards, pictures, or objects from a bag uh, to play, for example, bingo, uh, taking flashcards or pictures from piles to build like phrases and sentences, having students touch objects like shared objects that we usually have in the, in the language classroom, such as spinners, spinning bottles, spinning wheels, dice and counters, students having to share materials of any sort during games and arts and crafts activities, for example, or loose parts activities, having students work in pairs or groups, asking students to move around to do mingling activities, to dance or to play action games, uh, also asking students to whisper words or sentences to each other, playing memory games or matching games together, throwing objects to each other, such as balls or little toys. I really like that. Having students perform role plays. So it's a comprehensive list. 
isn't it? But I, I, I promise you, this is going to save you a lot of time. And in the email that you will be getting with uh, this additional information, there will be suggestions on how to adapt these things as well. Okay. So we're ready to move to tip number five. Okay, so tip number five is organizing your professional development plan for 2021. So it is a fact. We're all too exhausted right now to take any more courses this year, please. So it is high time we take a real break. And that's, that's why we, we are sharing these tips because we want a real break. We don't want to go into the holidays having to worry about not knowing anything about what's going to happen next year. So, but regardless of the delivery mode we'll be using in 2021, we know we can expect challenges because we're still in a pandemic. And we need to ensure that these experiences uh, are both effective and effective for both the teachers and the learners. So the more we prepare right now, the smoother things will run next year. So that's why we need to insist on continued professional development for the young learner teacher. We have to start taking steps on our own to find ways of developing our teaching practice that are flexible, inexpensive, and appropriate for our context. So I'll be sharing now some steps that I suggest for you to start organizing your professional development plan for 2021. So here we go. So pick up your pen and paper and let's start doing this right now. So the first step would be to create a list of the five priorities in terms of what you would like to develop as a young learner teacher in 2021. So write down your five priorities for professional development. So I have an example here. Uh, one, lesson planning. Two, classroom management. Uh, three, storytelling. Four, play-based learning. Uh, five, language development. Maybe you want to sit for a certificate, for example. And OK, uh, let's actually do a quick survey here in the chat box. Can you share one or two of your priorities for professional development in the chat box? I'm really eager to know what your plans are. Uh, yeah, Lucy, a real break. Yeah, so well deserved by this community. Totally. Yeah, Renata, pairing group work will be very limited. Lots of adaptations to be done. Of course, of course. Yeah, hybrid unless we can't reopen. Okay. Ah, Gislaine wants to invest in play-based learning. That sounds really good, Gislaine. That sounds amazing. It's in my list, too. I don't know if it's going to be for 2021, but yes. Um, okay, whoa, now we've got lots of them. And language development for Gislaine as well. And what else? G phonics, okay. Brenda, three and four, storytelling and play-based learning. You don't have to stick to these, okay? These are just ideas that came to my mind while I was preparing the meetup. Planning is very important. Ah, oh, planning to start a psychopedagogy post-graduation. Very nice one. Storytelling, play-based learning, lesson planning. Wonderful. Phonics for very young learners. Natalia, one, three, and four. Games, Thai games. Camila, reading strategies. All right. Okay. See, we have lots of different uh, ideas here. Lots of different plans for 2021. Okay, so the second step, suggested step here, so uh, would be to write notes of the practical steps that you can do, you can start like taking to develop that area. And here's something interesting. We do not necessarily need formal courses or certificates for all of the areas we want to develop. 
but we can all use a plan because a plan will help us spend our time and money more wisely. So, do you agree? <laughs> How does that sound? So, let's try and start writing some notes right now. So, for each of your priorities, the ones you just listed, write notes of the practical steps that you can take. Uh, there are people here studying for CPE, people who want to learn more about digital portfolios. Ah, let's see. There, I missed some of the ideas here. Ah, being able to have more time for me and my family. Ab absolutely, Kathy. Claire wants to learn more about pedagogical documentation and digital portfolios. Explore, explore, so explore some outside areas to play a lot with them. This is a nice strategy. If you have that possibility, go for it. So, all right, all right. Everything, Vanessa, everything. <laughs> okay, so now I'll give you some ideas of things that you can do. So, you can join a teaching community such as the Active English Inner Circle on Facebook. If you're not there yet, join us. Or there's also Braille, there's the iTEFL, uh, Young Learner Teaching SIG. Uh, if you have other teaching communities to, su to suggest, uh, go for it. Drop them in the chat box. Uh, what else can you do? You can watch free webinars and conferences. Ooh, there are so many of them right now. So what you can do is not to get like lost or overwhelmed. Do some research on the YouTube channels of the main publishing houses, such as uh, Cambridge University Press, Macmillan, National Geographic Learning, etc., and select uh, the most suitable webinars on that topic that you wish to develop. Uh, we can also study books about the topic. Uh, we can do that on our own or with a study group. Uh, you can probably see my positive discipline books here, <laughs> my fellow books, my friends. Um, many publishing houses have books on a wide range of young learner teaching topics, right? Uh, and finally, the most obvious way to develop, take courses. Um, decide what kind of course suits your demands and reality best and go for it. And that actually brings us to the end of this meetup, but we're not done yet. I'd like to thank you all for being here and contributing so much, not just in this meeting. This community has grown so much this year. I've been like observing that day after day and the sharing, learning and support have been incredible and they will continue, right? Together, we have made it to the end of 2020, and I know we're going to do even better in 2021. So, don't go yet, don't leave just yet, because we've got news for you. I'd like to share some very special news with you. You are the very first ones to hear about this, and I'm absolutely thrilled. So, next January, I'll be running a course to help young learner teachers like you develop an effective classroom management system. Many young, learn teacher, young learner teachers feel lost and in need of support and practical ideas to deal with classroom management in a more positive way. And the new context that we will have can really add an extra challenge to that, isn't it? So, this is what uh, my course uh, is all about. That's why I have created this course, because I know this is a struggle. Uh, I've been there. <laughs> I've had to learn a lot about this, and I'm still getting better by, like, by the day. So it's not just uh, classroom management is not just a set of techniques or a way to respond to challenging behavior. I believe classroom management is a whole system that you start building even before you step into the classroom. So would you like to learn how? So these are uh, the objectives in of this course. So I'll be teaching you how to develop and plan uh, your own positive classroom management system so that you can incorporate it into your teaching practice 
So I'm talking about a system, not a set of strat isolated strategies or tools. Um, we want you to finish the course feeling confident that you know how to organize your classroom and your lessons in a way that prevents misbehavior and creates a positive learning environment for everyone. Most importantly, this course is about changing the way you understand and deal with difficulties when they arise in the young learner classroom. And in this course, now let's get into details. You can expect to learn how to better understand child development and how it impacts behavior in the classroom because it does impact how to create a positive learning environment that helps prevent a range of struggles. Why do we need to deal with the problems if we can prevent a lot of them, right? You will learn how to plan developmentally appropriate lessons that prevent many typical problems. Create routines that work for you and for your learners and that contribute to the smooth running of lessons. Get an introduction to the positive discipline approach. Like I said, I am a certified positive discipline educator. Break the code of misbehavior. Identify its cause and respond effectively using positive discipline tools and strategies that I will teach you. That's an incredible amount of content. Uh, and an amazing community of colleagues that will support each other on their professional development journey as we start it. So, would you like to join us? So, the self-access um, course content becomes available on January the 18th. As a bonus, you will be able to attend live meetings with me to talk about anything concerning classroom management, especially cons considering uh, the new contexts. We meet online on Mondays at 7.30 p.m. to get and give advice, suggestions, to problem solve, and to celebrate success, of course. So if you're interested, scan this QR code right now and get a 100 reais discount off the price. So you can use the early bird code, positivity, <laughs> Sounds good, doesn't it? We all need it right now to get the discount. But this is only if you sign up in the next few days, okay, before December the 20th. So hurry to take advantage of this special offer for the community. Head into the holidays with peace of mind, knowing that you have the support you need to face the classroom management challenges of next year. All right, I'm, I'm super excited about this. I can't wait to see you in this course with me. So thank you very, very much for this lovely evening and I'll see you online soon. Bye-bye, good evening. Ah, Isadora, yes. Okay, Isadora has an important question here. Will the QR code be available on? Okay, okay, okay. So let's see this. So will the QR code be available on the email we will be getting? Yes, we can totally do that, Isadora. No problem. Fernando, can scan the QR code. Where else can I get info on that? Okay, Claire, Claire is there answering the questions too. Okay, <laughs> so thank you so much, everyone, for um, coming to this last online meeting of 2020. And I hope to see you soon. Bye-bye. Good night.